Phil, welcome back to the show. I'm here with Sky Jatani. Hello, Phil. Hi, <gasps> Sky. And who Hi. is this? It's the cherry on top. It's Christian Taylor. <laughs> That's me. Bedecked in beguiling red. Reddish. Is that like carnation? Like geranium red? What it red is, is that? Geranium red. I'll take that. Yeah. Okay. Okay. That's good. She's back. She hasn't been here for... Have you been gone for two weeks? Uh, yeah, at least. And I just had to talk to Sky, and I got so disgusted with him, I spit on him last week. <laughs> I heard that this. Happens. Out did. of disgust. I have my Superman shirt on this week. Yes. It, it repels spit. And <laughs> well, it, I wasn't away because I didn't like you two, I have to say. We had a, right. a family situation. Medical emergency. Medical emergency. So now do you know what Derek Rose's mom feels like? Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Without the millions and millions of dollars. It's pretty, pretty bad. But did you know that you can walk on your leg without an ACL? That really? you don't really need it? Really? And they had him prehabbing for? for two weeks for cutting and turning. So oh. athletes have to have them. Athletes simply have to have, have an to ACL. Have them. Yeah. I don't do any cutting and turning. Is you, that what you, you're you, you would be fine without your ACL. What does ACL stand for? Um, American Cruci- uh, Committee no. for no. Liberal no. Cutting no. and Turning. Nope. <laughs> It's um, a <laughs> cruciate ligament. I don't know what the A is. I've forgotten at the moment. Arterial. Ar- cru- alter- arterial. Arterial cruciate Arterial. Ligament. And they did everything from one tiny port, like all the scissors, instruments, the extra ligament. Like all the, the port of Los Angeles? Like the port in his knee. It's like oh, a it's hole, like, one uh, incision. One. One. And they did everything. Everything. Do you know how they do that? They inject no. micro robots. They must have. Micro robots with their own little knives and things. He doesn't know what he's doing. Because that about. ligament is underneath why your the have, back of your leg. Why would it's I have crazy. a podcast if I didn't know what I was right? talking yes, about? Yes, laparoscopic. But still, usually you it are used so to be two or three portholes. Now it's just down to one. And pretty soon it's going to be none portholes. They'll just think it. They'll, I guess they'll, they'll just, you'll swallow the tiny robot. Do robots. they really call them portholes? <laughs> they call them ports. <laughs> ports. Yeah. Yep. What? what are we talking about? I don't know. Have you sung the theme song yet. Poor audience. <laughs> hey, it's a podcast. What do you know? Hey, it's a podcast. And we got video. Hey, it's a podcast. So lend an ear. The film is your podcast starts right here. We'll talk to this guy. Hello, Sunday school lady. <laughs> I wondered who that was. I couldn't picture. And Chris, you don't watch <laughs> any of my work. I've been gone too long. You're not a supporter. <laughs> That's not true. I am totally and Christian too. Hi, Phil. Say hi, boys and girls. Hi, boys and girls. That's lovely. And maybe a guest. No, we don't. No guest here for you. Hey, it's a podcast. Slend it here. The Phil Fisher podcast starts right here. The Phil Fisher podcast starts right about here. I don't know where that came from. We rehearsed that before the show. <laughs> We've been working on that for weeks, and we didn't want to roll it out till it was perfected. <laughs> yeah. Mm-hmm. Now that it's perfected, we're going to roll it out. Okay. So you just saw a musical. I saw The Last Ship by Sting. Did it have portholes? It's, it's by it, Michael Bay. No, it is not. It's, That's the TV show. Why, they have the same name? Isn't it The Last Ship? It is The Last the Ship. It's show. the same. Why do they have the same name? I have no idea. It probably wasn't name. good marketing. This was the musical by Sting, yeah. which is in... It's in Chicago right now. I in, think it played for about three weeks. It yeah, ends this it's weekend. Going it's going Broadway. to Broadway, and we hope it's going to do... So it's in tryouts fantastic. in Chicago. Yeah, and it's interesting because... How did you get in? Well, you, they had these... Uh, they tried to fill they the had seats. these things called tickets? Yes, and they were $50, orchestra what seats. Oh, that's not bad. It was at the Bank of America Theater. And one thing I learned, if you ever go to the Bank of America Theater... Yeah? Definitely sit in the orchestra, but do it down front because there uh-huh. is these obstructed views. And when they say obstructed views... They mean it. They you're, mean, like... You're in the parking lot. The whole balcony extends, like... Halfway over oh, the orchestra okay. level, and you really can't see anything. I don't. I don't know how badly our audience needs to know about that. But, Sorry, but how was the show? The show was stunning, By breathtaking. Sting. I really, the music is um, brilliant, okay. and the book is super interesting, okay. and the actors were fabulous. So definitely, mm. if you're in New York, go see that show. It's not there yet, though. Yeah, it'll but be there in the middle of September. It'll be there in the middle of September. But Christian saw it first, twice, and actually. she's here you to saw report. It twice. I went back because I. It was so powerful. Wow. Like, I was incredibly moved. And uh, I. Does your husband know you just gave Sting $100? Yeah, I actually tried to take him to the second one. Yeah, and what did he say? 
He said, I really think I need to stay home with Jacob. <laughs> uh, so he didn't come. Yeah. I've seen Sting in concert a couple times. How was it? I've always really? wanted to see the police. It's like my favorite Well, the police, band. they're not around anymore. I know. I'm still I missed the waiting boat on that. for them. <laughs> well, they did a reunion tour. Did they? A couple of years ago. Yeah, they ago. did. I missed yeah. it. I saw they, Sting. They made fun of it themselves. They said it wasn't very good. I really? I saw Sting years yeah. ago. Well, once probably in high school, maybe college. And then I saw him again after I was married. And I think he was with Annie Lennox. They did something Interesting. together. Wow. That would be crazy. Yeah. Well, huh. this um, this play is a metaphor in a lot of ways for his own career, where he went through this fallow period for about 10 years and didn't make or do anything original. And Isn't he, he still in it? Um, well, he just created a musical. He, he did because... So, so this is about... Creating the musical is about the end of his fallow period, and it is the end of his fallow period. Something this is like true. <clears throat> what yes. if it doesn't do well? Is it still the end of his fallow period? If it doesn't do well, I think he will still feel incredibly accomplished. I mean, okay. what he did, even if it doesn't succeed in New York, is was... Is it as funny as the Book of Mormon? Not as funny, but it definitely is funny. Is funny? Yeah. Really? The priest is the most fun, he's funny, funny character. Sting's not funny. He's pretty serious. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And and his his um, musical, they're all themes of father son relationships and love lost. And he did an album years ago, uh, the Soul Cages. Yes. Yeah. Is that it? Yeah. I think that a lot of the themes of the musical exactly. are also in that. Mm. That's right. That disc it was a good disc. That's so. Yeah. Are so we anyway. Just kind of done okay. That's what I was doing. Here? Okay. We're back. So go see Sting, but except he's not in it. True. It's when a but celebrity it writes like something it. and they're not in it, it's just, you know, I want to see them. It's like when Madonna writes a children's book. I expected her to come to my house and read it to me. She wrote a children's book? Yeah, she wrote two children's books. Did she books. narrate it? Because then you could listen to she it. She probably did the book on tape, I imagine. Yeah. I don't know if I want Madonna. With a, I don't probably, want Madonna in my house with either. Books a to my fake children. British yeah. accent. Especially with a house full of boys. <clears throat> There's a new movie coming out just announced. Actually, it's not coming out for quite a while yet, but it's been announced that it's going to be produced. Based, yes, I saw that. Yes, based on the book The Shack. Oh, yeah. You know The Shack? Yep. Did you read The Shack? I yeah. did. I, yeah. It was a personal favorite of mine. It's it's moving. It is. It's emotional. For me, it was a very, I thought, vivid portrayal of some difficult, intangible concepts. Yes. That's very good. You realize Did you prepare that statement? No, I did not. That was, that was impressive. It's not a book of systematic theology. No, definitely you know, not. The people Why? Who are, Why not? Because it's a, it's a, it's a fictional book. Novel. Okay. It's it's not, and a lot of people who were upset with that book, I think misread it. Yeah. Yes. Right. And were they mostly upset? What was the big upsetness that God the Father was a woman? That at probably the, at bothered the end? some people. Yeah, I know that bothered that some people. That couldn't have was really there, been the problem. I think the bigger big, upset. I, I yes. think it's the I, physical relationship that bothered people. The affection between the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit, where they were physically well, they're, they're, affectionate. I, I think they're supposed to be close. Aren't th- they? That could be. That the could kissing be. of each other and the... I think the other part that bothered people is they... F- whenever you write a book that puts words in the mouth of God... Yeah, you're on thin ice. You're on thin ice with people who read that as... Ask Muhammad. <laughs> as right. adding to what yeah, God has and, said. And, 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 right, it's a novel, but it's, I think if right. that... Yeah, I don't need to get into it more, but I think that okay. just bothers people. Okay. Who want to be very and, systematic and it, and it was, about their theology. It was sold heavily in conservative Christian circles right. and Christian bookstores where you're more likely to bump into people who would take offense to something as opposed to its good sales also in right. the mass market where you'd say, hey, it's great that people are thinking about God right. when they read a book. And in the conservative world, we tend to say, yes, but the, the theology does not match my Baptist church. Yeah. We're and too easily offended well, as Christians, the, And I think I one think. of the reasons that book was so successful <laughs> well, is... Well, we are. Why are you laughing at that? <laughs> that's kind of, I think that's one of our recurring themes. Yeah. We're Wouldn't you sensitive? say that, that we're, as Christians, we're too we're easily too offended? Easily. I'm not easily offended. Um, oh, I'm with you too. Is that a challenge? Yeah, well, me either. <laughs> but so, I wouldn't say we're typical Christians. Would you say that? I don't know. What is the typical Christian? Here's the typical Christian. Christian. There is an interesting book written called The Homespun Gospel. Okay. And yeah. the argument of the book, they're trying to diagnose or, or define what is really at the center of American evangelicalism. Mm-hmm. And what the author concludes is that the real center of American evangelicalism is sentimentality. Hmm. That if you can be really Today, sentimental, yeah. then you're going to be successful in the Christian market. And I think that's what The Shack did well. It's what Duck Dynasty does well. Mm-hmm. It's what a lot of the best selling books out there in the Christian world Pile do. Pile well. on the emotion. It's a sentimental. And Short people. Short on the theology. Yes. Mm. So do you know who's making the movie? Do you know who's making The Shack? Yeah. Forrest Whitaker. 
You know Forrest Whitaker? It's because yes. the, the shack was in a forest. The no. shack is in a He was forest. just in the butler. That's right. He, he was, was in the in butler. The, he was in, um, he was in Bubble, Bubba Gump. No, wait. No. Bubba that? Gump. <laughs> he was he not was... Bubba in, in <laughs> No, Gump. no. He was in Forrest he Gump. No, he wasn't. He was, I, don't, I don't think so. I don't think so. He's been in lots of things. Yeah. But he's a good actor. So he's optioned the book. So he's actually the producer of the film. Is he, he going to star in it? He will also be in it. I don't think he's starring in it. Do you know who's starring in it? It, it, it appears. Idris Elba is going to be the star. I actually know who that is. Father. Is that Adina you know Menzel? Who, do you know who Idris <laughs> That's how Elba he pronounces is? Adina Menzel. Okay. <laughs> Have you seen either of the Thor movies? Yes. Yes. The gatekeeper, letting people in or not letting people in, the mm-hmm. all-seeing gatekeeper right. standing in the gatehouse. What's that called? The the the, the rainbow bridge? Oh, on the rainbow bridge yeah. to the pretty, pretty forest where the bubblegum fairies live <laughs> in Thorland. Okay. Asgard. That's Idris Elba. Okay. He's the gatekeeper. Got it. He's a big black guy. Yes. Tall. At least he is in that movie. And he's got a very know. deep voice. It's, a very deep it's voice. too bad the so guy that the did star. the Green Mile. I don't remember his name. He was actually Michael Chicago. Duncan. Yeah, Michael he's Chicago. a Chicago Clark, guy. Yeah. Michael Clark Duncan. Yeah, he Clark was Michael. phenomenal. He would have been great. He had three first names, and I don't know which one is his last name. Michael Clark Duncan. Clark yes. Duncan Michael. Michael Clark Duncan. Michael Duncan Donuts. We derail so fast on <laughs> so, this podcast. So, so he, what role is he playing? I think he's the dad. I think he's the main guy. Really? I think he's a, he's a really big kind of but, kind of heroic figure. He is. He is. I don't picture yeah, but he's guy. got kind of a sad face. Does he? You, yeah. His face is always behind that helmet. I never he, really noticed. That's that. why it's sad because oh. you've never seen it yet. But we're going to see it for the first time in the shack, mm. brought to you by Forrest Whitaker. And do you know who else has agreed to be in the movie? And probably, although it hasn't been announced, play the role of God the Father. This is just creepy. Which won't stir anyone up at all in conservative circles. Oprah Winfrey. Oprah Winfrey. The Pope. I, I read that. Oprah Winfrey is going to be, we think, God the Father. You know, you know. Think about it though. <laughs> she has conquered every possible thing in, the, in right. the world of media. Right. The only thing left for her is God. Right. That's really what she I, needs I to just do. think that we ought to not go down this road in this discussion. <laughs> Let's just um, move do, on. Do you have like thing. a pending project with Oprah? Oh, or? no. Do you, no, do I you? don't. I just think, you know, <laughs> just to leave it at well, that. Well, here's the deal. See, I wonder how many people will complain about Oprah being God. And is it because of her spirituality? Or is it simply the fact that, you know, could you, if you had like Dame Judy Dench being God, would the same people say, oh, oh okay, that's okay? I, or is it really because she's a woman? I it, don't, can't, it can't be because she's black because we had Morgan Freeman playing God and everybody was fine with that. I don't think those are all, any of those things are going to be the issue. Okay. I, I always do this to Phil. He gives it's his because theory. Because she's overweight? And then do I we, say. Don't want to see a God overweight? Is that what it's about? What? God's what? very heavy. I'm going all the th- with all the theories. So. All right, here's the deal. I think what's going to happen is is kind of similar to what happened with Oprah Winfrey and Rob Bell. Okay. Now, Rob yeah. Bell had all of his critics yes. because he wrote Love Wins and you know his various views, and he had his critics. And then he, he kind of got connected to Oprah Winfrey. They did an interview, and they're doing some stuff together. And then all Rob Bell's critics go, see, see, see? He's in with Oprah. That just shows you how far off the reservation oh, he is. Oh, right. So, Similarly, yeah. there are people who are critical of the shack. Yeah. And they're going to go, see, 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 see. It, Oprah's on it. It can't be, it can't be yeah, Orthodox now. They've it's, it's, entered the house of Oprah. So this right. is now a whole different religion. That's right. So it's the number of people. Because my kids in their conservative Christian private school, Oprah is held up as a model of heresy. Really? Yeah. At Wheaton Academy. Oprah's the bad guy? A model of, not the only uh, model, but here's, for example, people that don't take the Bible seriously and kind of start their own religion like Oprah Winfrey, and she's the poster child because everybody knows her and she's a little bit out there theologically. Hmm. And so Rob Bell and the Shack are on her wagon. But now. See, can you have Oprah in your project without everyone assuming your project is now in Oprah? Well, she's big. She's, she's the, her she, wagon is bigger than yes. whatever wagon you could have her be on. Yeah. Now, which is kind of like selling out. I think most people will say what to have well, her in your no that you want your wagon? Christian product sold, and so you're compromising. You're saying, okay, I want to get well, my product out there, and so I'm gonna hook hook my wagon to Oprah. Yeah, and you know, let's everybody, be honest though. If like if Oprah called me up today and said, Sky, yeah. 
I read your book. I want you to be on my show. And what I want you to be on my happen? show. Do you really think what? I'm going to say sorry, Oprah? Sorry, but Oprah. I'm not going to talk. About I, I think Orthodox. you'd go on her show. I, yeah, you're darn yeah, right. I go. What on about show. you? Keep if right. Oprah called what? you and said, "We love what's in the Bible. Come talk about it on the Oprah Winfrey show." Yeah. If someone says, "I want to give you access to my audience to talk about what you're teaching about Christianity," yeah. there, exactly. Then there we I'm go. I'm going to go there, but that's not. That's what everybody's that's kind doing. Of this, but ultimately, then are you selling out? The, no, no, no. So unless I, I've you spoken change your churches. message, I, unless you change your message to fit. That's right. right, Oprah. I agree with you that everything is love and gummy bears. And Phil and I probably have both spoken at churches or conferences or, or ministries that we are not completely aligned with. I would never do that. <laughs> <laughs> I would but never my do policy that. is simple. What's is, your policy? If you're going to let me say whatever I want, <laughs> yes. I will speak. Wherever wherever you pay me to speak. And and I there have been some places where I've been invited to speak where I've been given freedom to like say whatever I want. Conferences. And I have certainly not been invited back. <laughs> like where? Well, I'm not gonna name any names, but yeah, there's some. Okay, so So the whole point is it's Forrest Whitaker's movie. He's the producer well, you know, and he just co starred with Oprah in the shat in, in the butler, which they helped produce together. Yeah. So they're apparently they're good friends. Well, to, so it's to, not that to, that surprising. To be and, and she's the butler a good actress. was that's, it, that's right. She's to a be, good actress. To be fair to Oprah, she's a very good actor. Yeah. And and, and when when I read The Shack, I thought of the woman, uh, the African American woman from the first Matrix movie. And you know, I thought, of, oh yeah, yeah, but the I, Oracle, the I Oracle. Yeah, of, the Oracle. I, I, I thought of yes, Mrs. Butterworth. <laughs> Aunt Jemima. That's it. Seriously? Yeah, yeah. Jemima. When you think of God, oh, you think of Aunt Jemima. That is offensive. I am offended. Yeah. Yeah, I know it's terrible. You but thought that, of a negative stereotype. She, how is that negative? Aunt Jemima is controversial because she's a, a slave. Aunt Jemima is wonderful. She's not a well, slave, they is re, she? they remade her. They took off her hat. Well, it was a stereotype from from uh, black housemaids. It, yeah, it's like the the, the But the, they remade okay, her, and now she's a businesswoman. Let me and tell you this: she runs General Electric, uh, okay, and only or makes maybe I'll just syrup keep on the talking, side. and hopefully you'll listen to me. But <laughs> I think it is kind of colored by the fact that no pun I, intended. <laughs> <laughs> I was raised in Mississippi, and the I same did not know that. the same woman that um, sort of helped my mo- my grandmother in her home and helped raise my Your dad. Maid? Are you she, are trying to avoid using the word maid? Domestic she was our maid. Help? Her name was Marguerite. Did she look like Mrs. Butterworth? She kind of looked like Aunt Jemima, and she was wonderful. Which one, Aunt Jemima, what, Aunt Jemima or, Mrs. or Mrs. Butterworth? Butterworth. I want to see those Marguerite. two have like a celebrity <laughs> death They're match. kind of the same. They're yeah, kind of the same. They They're kind of the same. What is the yeah. difference? Uh, well, well, what's the difference between one, the Quaker Oats guy and, and, <laughs> and Benjamin Franklin? <laughs> Benjamin Franklin was a hound dog who went after a lot of... French aristocratic women. I don't think is the that Quaker a, Oats man did that. You just call him a hound dog? Is that really? On our song? podcast? Yeah. <laughs> Benjamin Franklin well, was a hound dog. To. Was a good friend of mine. Well, what, what are we talking okay, about? So Forrest Whitaker is making a movie oh, based on The Shack. Yeah. He invited his friend Oprah to come along. I actually think she'll be really good in that role. Because that role I think she matches her personality. So will you but see it's it? Be, yeah, I'll, I'll see it. I'll absolutely see it. Because I would love to see how... It's like I, it's like a thirty million dollar film. I would love to see how they handle the end. You know where, where they're actually yeah. everything gets. They need a lot of special effects yeah. for the end. I'm not going to spoil it. I want to see how they deal with the, the Holy shack. Spirit. Yeah, I want to know if Andy Circus is going to do motion capture for the Ladybug Holy Spirit thing. <laughs> she wasn't a ladybug. She what, was shimmering was light. You're thinking of Sesame Street. So, well, who was the, the ladybug, there a ladybug picnic? in that book? I don't no. remember. I what don't am I thinking? But you know, I'll Ses- find it uh, to be picnic. interesting because I have three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve ladybugs at the ladybug picnic. Okay, go ahead. <laughs> I don't know what that was. Uh, you must not have watched Sesame Street because no, I knew sorry. exactly what that was. I grew up at Sesame Street, but I didn't pay attention. That's why I'm so multicultural because <laughs> of Sesame Street. Uh, well, that's Electric Company. An Electric Company. We're going to turn it on. We're going to give you the power. It's about the Holy Spirit. We're gonna... <laughs> anyway. I was going to say, yeah. I think it will be very interesting because I have a friend that is a, has been an executive producer himself on this and worked with <gasps> the author. And they've had <gasps> fits and starts with this project for quite a while. I think he's been working on it about five years. And I have not heard that from him that this was wonder what was happening. I wonder if he's still involved. So Maybe I'm wondering no either involved. is this really going to be the way that it goes down and yeah. I miss something? So we'll see. Well, it's been I'll be interested. officially announced with pictures, of, moneymaker. with pictures of Forrest Whitaker and Idris Elba. That doesn't mean much. And Idris and Oprah 
Idris Elba Oprah and Forrest. Forrest. I actually looked it up on IMDb yeah. and it isn't there yet. Oh, and so, then it doesn't exist. So that means it clearly doesn't anything exist. can happen. No money uh, has been expended. I got my new issue of Christianity today, the other day. A lovely periodical that I suggest you all. We need to have uh, we need to have Andy Crouch back on. Yeah, but he lives in Pennsylvania, so yeah, I know we got to catch him when he's in town. But right. he said he was going to be in town in July, and this is July, so we got. I met with him last week, actually. <laughs> oh, great! He was here last week. Well, and why we don't you tell him. us what he said? You weren't here last you, week. Oh, good point. Remember? Oh, that's right. You were shooting oh, fireworks last week. Last week. Last week. <laughs> <laughs> that last week. Quit complaining. <laughs> that last week. Think before you I speak. You were yeah, talking you... about a different last <laughs> right. week. Right. <laughs> okay, you read your Christianity <laughs> today. Idris Elba. <laughs> Adina Menzel. What, what kind of name is that? I don't know. Idris. I it's don't a guy. Understand. It doesn't, doesn't sound, yeah, it does nice sound like a woman. I don't understand names anymore. Can we stay on track? I don't understand Please. names anymore. People are not even, they're turning us off I, right and now. And you think you're ethnically sensitive because of Sesame Street. In Sesame Street, it was just Mr. Hooper. I understand that. A Hooper, you make hoops. What? Is that what a, a Cooper? What's Mr. A Cooper? Hooper Cooper. worked in the grocery store. I know he okay. wasn't very ethnically diverse. No, he but, wasn't. But he sold his his wares Interest. to everyone. Uh, so there's an article in Christianity. I got my new yes. issue of Christianity, and I, and I thought it was interesting because I've thought about this myself. Andy Stanley, you know who Andy Stanley is? I do. I do. do you know who Andy Stanley uh, is? I do. He's the son of I don't know Charles Charles Stanley. Charles Stanley. Okay, pastor Good. of North Point Church in Georgia. Give him a bell. That's a big church, right? It is a big church. And and. Which one's the pastor of which? What's Andy Ooh. Stanley the pastor Andy of? is North Point. North Point. Yeah. And Charles is? Whatever. East Point? I don't know. West Point? North Point Senior? <laughs> is he still living? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, of course he is. Anyway, Andy Stanley said that pastors should stop saying the Bible says when they're preaching. Well, the Bible tells me so. You stop that. <laughs> stop saying Why that. Why would I stop saying and that? And the reason he says, he proposes, and this is what he has started doing, saying Paul says, Jesus says, be specific about who says this instead of the Bible says. What about the writer of this, Hebrews? This is a bunch of he's, much ado about nothing. He's not giving retroactive advice to the authors of Scripture. The writer of Hebrews never says the Bible says. No, I'm saying if I'm preaching Hebrews, do I have to say the writer of Hebrews says? Oh, Because we don't know yes. who the writer of Hebrews was. Yes, you do. Yes, you do. But he says, okay, his main reason is to keep people who are skeptical of the Bible's authority engaged in the sermon. So he believes there's a significant number of people who, if you say the Bible says, they tune out and they're gone. What if you say the word of God says or the scriptures say? Or well, Jesus said the scriptures say yeah, it is did. written in the scriptures, that's right. which is I think that's maybe a, a little less likely to immediately throw up red flags than the bot. Especially are you say saying with you agree accent. with him? The Bible says. Are if you, you say it with the southern accent? Are you saying you agree with him? Yes. Really? I. And, but here's why: because I I don't say that ever. I never say the Bible says. In what's in the Bible? What's in the Bible says? I think if somebody has put that DVD into the machine, they're probably okay with what the Bible says. But here's why. Here's why. Because I think it it leads to simplification, oversimplification of reading the Bible. Because there are lots of things that are said in the Bible that are not prescriptive statements, That's they're true. descriptive statements, and if you pull those out, because you can say the Bible says it's a sin to have a tattoo, the Bible says it's a sin to eat pork, the Bible says go kill that guy with this sword, and in, in all of those cases, those statements are in the Bible, right. but you're not, they're not being commanded. So I think What's missing in your statement is the Bible doesn't say to you. That you right, do those things. right. It's, it's so, said, so it's context. It's, yeah. I think right. it, it it kind of uh, spackles over context in a disturbing way, where you can oversimplify things. And because I can say the Bible says God has feathers, the Bible says God created the world um, with a measuring rope. Okay, but that's I can all those fine. statements are true. They're not helpful. But that's not Andy Stanley's point. I know that's my point though. Can't I have I'm a different point than Andy Stanley? I'm kind of lost in this Stanley? whole conversation, and again, I'm like, the Bible says much okay, to but, do about but nothing. Phil, based no. on, wait a minute, though. I wait, think it based is on medium your argument, ado about medium. Based on what you're saying, how is that solved by saying Paul says or Jesus says? Because that or implies the writer Moses says. That implies or that, the says. that I'm actually at least trying to understand the context. Who said it, and who did they say it to? To just say the Bible says, there's no context of who said it and to whom. You know, see yeah, what I'm saying? I don't, I, I, I don't know. I don't, I don't see, see what anything saying? wrong. Do you say the Bible says when you preach? I, I don't think. You know what? If you were to say to me, Paul says, yeah. 
Who says Paul has any authority for these people? Exactly. Why is but, that any but, different? But at least you established that. And who is Paul? Paul is Paul is just a name outside of <laughs> the context of the Bible. Name, and love is just a feeling. <laughs> you Paul, know, Paul, yeah, Paul only just, makes sense in like, the context yeah, of the Bible. The Apostle the Paul, the Apostle Paul <laughs> wrote this. That the would Apostle help. Paul, or you'd say the Le- the Levitical code says this that you shouldn't you know trim okay. your beard, as opposed to the Bible uh, says the, you the, shouldn't the, trim the, your beard. The, That's a confusing message. These for are him. two completely different issues, though. Yeah, you're yeah. Ta- you're talking mm. about correctly teaching the Bible in context. Yes. What he's talking about, what Andy Stanley t- is talking about, is. There's a Which lot of people. There's a lot of people in our culture who are skeptical of biblical authority. Therefore, I'm not going to mention the Bible says. Those are two very different things. Because I don't think if somebody's sitting at North yeah. Point Church, and he says Jesus says, or Paul says, or the Psalmist says, or Moses says, I don't think that carries any more credibility with people than to say the Bible says. I, I think uh, no, no. It's, so but, but I don't. I, think I don't think his argument is and all I that think, strong. And I think he would say this because there was more to the story that I didn't copy down. But so you took him out of context. Yeah, yeah. Because <laughs> because Andy Stanley says the Bible right. says. Um, I think he also says that it encourages people to think about the Bible more realistically and, and complexly. Well, that's good. Than say, okay, who are we talking about? Right. You know, who taught like this? And there, there are contrasting messages in the different gospels. You can say yeah. Matthew, the gospel writer, said this. Mark said this. I, no, I think, I think yes, together. that all augments. Does that but, make sense? But to say that we shouldn't say that because sense? it may offend people and they may not... Not offend people, okay, but they just may, t- they, they'll tune out. They have a problem with the authority of the Bible. If they have a problem with the authority of the Bible, they have a problem. That's a problem. Well, that's not a good well, way to no, reach out to I think people. Christians got, I think Christians got. You have a problem, so I'm not. Sky I says I have care. a good point. He hasn't said it yet, but he's about to. I'm about to say that Christian has a point. And Thank here's you. the point: if if you only ever specify the author yeah. saying Paul says this or Jesus says that or whoever says, yeah. what you in, indirectly do is give, give people the option of saying, well, I really like what Jesus says. I'm not too big on what Paul says. Right. I'm right. certainly not in favor of what Moses says. And so you, rather than recognizing that the true author of all of this is the Holy Spirit. Absolutely. Through so the, the Holy Spirit says. What he well, says. Well, I, I think there, what we are doing is we're trying to distance ourselves from parts of Scripture that our culture doesn't like. I agree. By saying, by ignoring <laughs> the authority and the okay. sufficiency of Scripture okay. and trying to pit one part against another. Okay. And so that's what happens when people say, well, I, I like the red letters. I like the red words right, in the Bible, but right. I don't like the black words. Well, you realize the well, red ones and the black ones have the same author. Yeah, you, uh, you can't pick and choose, but at the same time, you should understand the difference between... Yes. Prescriptive and descriptive between uh, and that's the, take, that's something take a, spoken in the context of the old covenant versus in the context of the new covenant, yes. and just saying that you know uh, Paul said this in this book automatically gives you a clue. Okay, we're in the New Testament, we're in the new covenant. Yeah, so but I'm gonna, but again, that, like he says, that's teaching. Yeah. That is teaching right. in context, right. and that is different mm. than what Andy And yes, Adam that Stanley absolutely saying. needs Andy to happen. Sandy. People are okay. too biblically ignorant, and, they, and they're too unnuanced in the way they right. think about Scripture. But I don't think merely using or dropping the Bible says is going to do much at all to get I, people to read Scripture okay. in context. Right. I agree. Sky says. I'm and if him. you're going to be at Okoboji right. in the first week of August, I'm doing yeah. a whole five-day class on how to interpret the Bible. Where is this mm. Okoboji? It's in Iowa. Iowa? Where is this Iowa? The Okoboji mm-hmm. Lakes Bible and Missionary Conference. Iowa is in the middle. Look for corn. Once you've found the corn, go to the northwest corner and look for a lake. There you will find Sky sitting under a fig tree cross-legged teaching. <laughs> it should be that way. That's right. Shouldn't it? Actually, in a, That's hilarious in a image. junior high classroom teaching in uh, Northwest Iowa. Arnold's Park, Iowa. Look it up. Or go to Okoboji Conference. Is it Okoboji Conference or Okoboji Bible Conference? Dot. Something. Like Google it. Google it. Okoboji. And, and Okoboji is spelled O-K-O-B-O-J-I. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Bill will type it up so you can look it up. Okay. Um, did you know... In related news, there's related news. Very similar to Andy Stanley saying, "Don't say the Bible says anymore. Don't say the Bible says. Say the Bible did." Um, Earth's magnetic field is is shrinking. Is that okay. a good thing? No. No. No, it's not a good thing. Okay. What happens when the Earth's magnetic, magnetic field... field, which protects the planet from huge blasts of deadly solar radiation? Oh 
has been weakening over the past six months. Let me guess, it's conservatives' fault. According to data collected by a European Space Agency That's satellite array one. called oh. Swarm. Do you know that the European Space Agency put up an array of satellites called Swarm? That sounds that's like a plot scary. detail from that's the Avengers. Like, yeah, that's the Matrix right there. Swarm. Look out for the Swarm. Um, the scientists who conducted the study are still unsure why the magnetic field is weakening, but one likely reason is that Earth's magnetic poles are getting ready to flip. Hmm. Dum, dum, dum. In fact, the data suggests Magnetic North is moving towards Siberia. Does that mean we have to turn our maps upside down? I think it means there's an, uh, there's an evil oligarch in Russia that has built some device that is attracting the <laughs> North Pole to Russia. That sounds like Sonic the Hedgehog. And James Bond is going to have to go save me him. Of Sonic the Hedgehog? Yeah, do you remember that guy? The, who is the, who is the bad the guy in Sonic the Hedgehog? I checked I out know. of video games after Asteroids. The bad guy in the Sonic he, uh, the Hedgehog is exactly what is, you described. Uh, yeah. The crocodile hunter? No. Is he the bad guy? No, he's Sonic? a bad oligarchy in Russia. <laughs> oh, 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 yeah, that guy. Yeah. No, I'm thinking of the bad guy in the Smurfs, who's also kind of <laughs> so like So you that. think Vladimir Putin and his folks are They're trying us. to pull the North Pole, okay, the what, magnetic what North Pole. What happens when the magnetic poles flip? That's, woo. Well, all the your, compasses your go compass the other way. Your compass is upside down. Is Everything that all? is upside down. Is that all? Pla the world is upside down. Yeah, Everything there's, there's is upside the, down. You're missing something here. What? What are we missing? These things, they don't like switch. They don't flip poles overnight. Such a flip is not instantaneous, there but would go. take many hundred, if not a few thousand years. Oh, we'll years. be gone. Says... Why should Rune, we care? Here's the, Just here's the guy doing the reporting, the, uh, the European scientist. Rune Flobergagen. Shut up. <laughs> Let's, Rune... Flobergagen. <laughs> what is he finished? Poor guy. <laughs> He's finished. Um, and this has happened He's many finished? times in that the was funny. in the in the past. <laughs> It has happened. It has happened many, but many that's times. not the point. Well, okay, I mean, if yeah. it's happened many times in the past, then why do we even care? The it's going to all be fine. It's probably going to be fine, but it might be the end of everything. And I want to go on that. I want to go on that one. Because this, it's the end of the world right. as we why know it. Why is the Western world flipping upside down? Why? Because that's the way God because created it. up is it. down, down is up, black is white, because white is black, Burger good is King bad, just bad introduced is... the gay whopper. Oh. And that's not a person. <laughs> Is that, a, is, is, a, that, is that a king? Is, a is that a new mascot? What? This is a new mascot why of Burger gay, King? Why would the or Burger gay Queen be a person? Uh, I think <laughs> From I, Burger King. I think I sat next to that is person. Is the regular on a Whopper once. a person? Well, 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 they have. Why did no hamburgers had orientations? LGBT equality. Burger King unveils the rainbow wrapped Whopper. It is called the Proud Whopper. The, See, the old Whopper was the humble Whopper. I, I, and I didn't like to eat that I don't one. Like I my felt bad. I don't, I don't like to eat at Burger King, period. I think they're just trying to get people there. I don't like food that has a sexual orientation. Burger King Worldwide is serving up a new video. Yum, delicious. A new video and a specially wrapped version of its flagship sandwich to trumpet its support of gay, lesbian, bisexual, and transgendered people, which led, and we're not making this up, John Piper to tweet, farewell Burger King. So now Burger King is going to show up on the Oprah Winfrey Network with its own show. So are, is John Piper leading us to believe that he is really anti-gay people? He's done anti-gay whoppers. <laughs> yeah, but the effort makes the Miami-based burger giant the first of the big U.S. fast food chains to take such a bold stance on the politically charged issue and underlines how a growing number of retailers see support for LGBT rights as good for business. Things are going to get crazy, and it's making the poles of the magnetic field of the flip. Earth flip. Everything, everything mm. right is wrong, and everything wrong is right, and it's all upside down, and the Whopper Here's what is a me. harbinger of the future. Here's, Here's what, what he's going to say. It's the it Whopper. It goes back to consumerism. No, I'm not going there. But what this is what bothers me. is It bothers me that now when you go to Chick-fil-A and have a sandwich, you're yep. making a political and religious statement. You're, you're having a Christian sandwich. And when as, you go to, as my friend Mike Naraki refers to it, Christian chicken with a pickle. <laughs> And when you go to Burger King, you're now making a political yeah, statement. Yeah, you're having a gay sandwich. <laughs> this whole show needs to be canceled. We need to it. start over. We have to start over. This is terrible. What is happening? 
It's yeah. the end of so Western civilization it's the end of Western, and our podcast. Well, and the whole civilization because all of our compasses are going to be upside <laughs> down. So we can't find our way home. We can't. That's so metaphorical. We can't find our way home. Or, that's it. Because our, our, there's no We're compass. not in Kansas anymore. <laughs> the North Pole is so, the South Pole. Does that mean Santa Claus have to move to the South Pole <gasps> and penguins have to move to the North Pole? Probably. Are they all magnetically oriented? Yeah. <sighs> <laughs> it means Australia can't be down under anymore. No, it has to it's be up over, over. Up over. <laughs> and our toilets have to flush the other way. Will that happen? I don't, if you eat a gay whopper. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my word. I don't even know how to get this back on track. I just other to, than I think we should just say goodbye. <laughs> and, okay, can we go back to Let's the Whopper? Let's do the theme song. Yeah, we need to go back to the Whopper for a second. Is there any precedent just for this kind of activism on the part of fast food chains before? No. Well, according to this article, no. <laughs> I'm but sure the, they've but done this an is exhaustive the dawn of a new study. day. This but, is a new day. I, I was watching, you know all those companies that help you find hotel rooms, book hotel rooms yeah. online? Like Hotel.com? Yeah. Orbis? I don't know if it, I don't, Travelocity? I'm, I don't know which one it was. I don't know which one it was. Kayak? But it was on... Price it was on ESPN. I think it was during the World Cup. I'm watching these Europeans roll around on the ground holding their ankles because someone breathed on them. Um, and this ad comes on, and it's for a, a hotel thingy thingy. Find you a hotel thingy. Mm -hmm. And it's two guys, two guys, and the one says, well, we finally got our in-laws to take the kids, and we need to find the perfect hotel. And, the other, and, and I'm like, wait, what? <laughs> and the other guy says, and I'm excited to go to this kind of place. And the first guy says, I'm excited to go to this kind of place because I'm really, and it's a great room. It's a great room because I really need to catch up on my sleep. And the other guy looks disappointed and says, oh, is that what you wanted to do? Ew. <laughs> And it's on ESPN, like, you know, testosterone, sports. I'm like, wait. I don't want to see any hotel wait. ad that has anything to do with sex. Yeah. Yeah, but I'm just I'm trying to figure out statistically speaking of all the couples that are trying to get away from their kids to find a nice hotel. What percentage of them are are too many? So what but you're that's not what, the issue. what know, you're saying is issue. what you're it's saying not. is this hotel company is trying to become it's, it's like they're jumping on the politically correct bandwagon. Well, it's they they want to be associated everyone I think was waiting for, you know, the tipping point, the perceived tipping point of of gay rights and now that they've decided it's happened, now right. we want to be on the right side of history. So we're going to make a gay whopper and we're going to have two men who are, are have just had a new baby and aren't getting any sleep and so they need their in-laws to let them go it, to it a nice hotel. It isn't just wanting to be on the right side of history, it's wanting to be on the right side of demographics. When you yeah. look, especially if people under 30, they overwhelmingly support gay equality and, and so marriage rights. So is it just because that's all they want to market to? Well, I, you, like that, that ad you're speaking about with the hotel room, they're not they're not just going after the That's true. three to four percent of the population That's who might true. be gay couples. They're going after the fifty the to sixty percent of the population that is right. progressively supporting minded. That. That's supporting yeah. that, and they see that that commercial and they go, "I um, want to give my business to that company right. because they're progressive and it right. just it just strikes me that they are they and it does all come back to consumerism. They yes, really feel like it's come to the place where if you are offended by that idea, they're okay not having your business right. And that's it's it's still a you big know, chunk of the country that doesn't like the idea of gay marriage. But you know what? They're older I mean, it's a and it's getting minority. smaller. You're not the future, exactly. You are not the future, and we don't want to find you a hotel. Is that really what they're saying? And we don't care if you want to eat our food. No, they're saying there's enough people in the other camp. And shouldn't the first gay hamburger come from Dairy Queen, not <laughs> oh, Burger King? Goodness. Okay. Thank you. Wow. Next. Good night, everyone. Next. Good. Okay. Next topic. <laughs> <laughs> Moving on. I'm just saying. Do you we know have, what? I, are there any other gay foods at Burger King, or is it just the Whopper? Uh, and it's called the Proud Whopper. It's the Proud Whopper. Uh, can he's, I still get? Can I get an unproud is it, Whopper? Is it in any way different? He's than proud. A and he's an unproud. Get fat from it. What? Is there anything different about the Whopper itself? No. The wrapper is rainbow colored, and on the inside it says, "We're all the same on the inside." And is this being marketed all over the country or just certain places? I don't know. Because I haven't been to a Burger King. I haven't been to a Burger King. The Burger King's around us well, went which out of business. Which it is my the point. They really are trying to get people into Burger King. 
you know. Well, who, what company is not trying to get people into that I know. company? What, what? <laughs> Burger King is not as popular as a large majority of other Chick Fil A, McDonald's. Person, yeah. What gay, lesbian, bisexual, transgender, into whoppers. queer person is 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 gonna see that commercial and go, you know what? I haven't had a Whopper in 30 years, but darn it, I'm gonna go eat a Whopper. Probably a lot. <laughs> what was your point, Sky? That no one would. I'm just saying, if you're a Whopper person, you're a Whopper person. Yeah. I don't think a no, gay Whopper is suddenly going to improve business. I think they are. I think people would you're say, hey, a, they're supporting a, us. A celebratory I'm go. Whopper of appreciation. And will McDonald's, That's what they're going for. Will, they want the Whopper of appreciation bump in their sales. Will McDonald's counter with a Good McGay? question. A, uh, maybe a transgender Chicken McNugget? You know what bothered me about the Chicken McNugget? <laughs> a couple years ago... <laughs> A couple years ago, we're in line with our little children to get something, and there was yeah. a, there was a, a stand up poster. What are those things called? Display, Standies. A standee. Standee. Advertising the chicken McNuggets. Yeah. Or a new and improved or whatever. And it was. that bothered you? No. What bothered me is that on the stand up, it it said all white meat, and the words white and meat were in quotes. <laughs> The quotes really bothered me. Because it's not does, really me. I don't know what, what that, that those quotes mean? I don't know. Or it wasn't really white. Wow. Well, the new transgender nuggets are both white and dark meat. That's trans meat. <laughs> <laughs> the uh, new transgender nuggets I'm are... I'm sorry, people. I'm apologizing. I have fallen hen, at my post. Hen and rooster and in And the train oh, is off the tracks, yeah. and there is absolutely yeah. nothing I can do. You know, the world... I'm, I'm just, sorry. The world is so upside down. It's gone so crazy magnetically and genderly. That I, I just genderly, gen, Did he just say genderly, genderly, yes, softly, genderly, yeah. It's, is that from? It was Phantom, Phantom of the Opera. Opera. Thank is, you very is it much. Time for the show. Thank to you be very over. much. Where are we? <laughs> the show's almost done. Christian bookstores are the next gay marriage battleground. Did you know that? This is our last. Story Tell me why. Day. Does anyone really? Christian Tell bookstores. Me why. King, huh? Here's been, no, Can not, we talk about anything King. else other than gay things? No, that's yeah, our yeah, theme. Today. The thing. That's our thing. We've talked about the shack, okay. and we talked about Sting. All right. And I, he's not gay. Go ahead. As far as we know, uh, Christian bookstores are the next gay marriage battleground. In April, Convergent Books, which is a division of Crown Publishing Group, released "God and the Gay Christian: The Biblical Case in Support of Same-Sex Relationships" by Matthew Vines. You know about that book, yes, right? Yes, I do. Because Christianity. What is today the biblical case? Reviewed. Well, that's not what we're talking. You have to read the whole day. book. The book is an attempt by Vines, whose 2012 YouTube video claimed that being gay is not a sin went viral. Uh, it's his attempt to argue that the Bible does not conde condemn committed monogamous monomagadas, do, 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 same sex relationships. Do, do, do. The book received a withering review in Christianity Today. Mm -hmm. Have you heard of Christianity Today? I've heard of it. Okay. Albert Moeller. No, I did not write that. Albert Moeller, the president of Southern Baptist Theological Seminary, warned that the book sought to overthrow two millennia of Christian moral wisdom and switch the magnetic poles. <laughs> uh, and he released a full length ebook to rebut Vine's arguments. <clears throat> but the final hammer fell in mid May when the National Religious Broadcasters forced Waterbrook Multnomah Publishing Group, the evangelical publisher who put out the book, to resign its membership in the organization. Now, this is where it gets. That's like being kicked out of a club that no one knew existed. Or really wanted to be in. That's right. Um, this is where it gets dicey because. Multnomah didn't publish that book. It was their imprint. It was a sister imprint. And that was their argument. It says, we didn't even publish that book. We didn't, didn't, didn't publish it. Why are you kicking us out but of the But the NIV? editors of the book for the imprint it's work. It's the same for, editors yeah. that work for both it's imprints. plausible deniability. And so NRB said, you had the same people that, that work for you, work on that book. Mm -hmm. Therefore, you as Christian publishers are putting out material that we consider unbiblical. Right. Which is interesting First of all, because the National Religious Broadcasters is putting itself up as the arbiter of what is biblical. Well, this gets and to my point biblical. that we made some time ago about World Vision, which is in the evangelical world, it is our parachurch organizations that really bind us together. We don't have oh, a, yeah. a, a, a structured authority the way the Roman Catholics do, for example. So when our parachurch organizations boot someone out or include someone in, what they're really doing is saying, this is. 
They're legitimizing. Right. This is legitimate evangelical teaching, and this isn't, and so they're right. functioning in that capacity. Right. Because we don't have we don't have denominations to do that for us. We've yeah. we've thrown out our denominations, and so we need the National Religious Broadcasters Association to tell us what is orthodoxy. Um, there are a number of these books coming out, though. So the, the the topic of this story is that it's going to be more and more of an issue as more and more books dealing with gay rights from a Christian or biblical perspective come out. And one that's about to come out um, releasing in October is by Jennifer Knapp. You mm-hmm. know, Jennifer Knapp, the singer. Knapp. Knapp. She disappeared for a while and came back and said, by the way, did I mention I'm a lesbian? And everyone went, oh, my. What? Did we pull your albums? What did we do? We didn't know. You weren't, were you, when you made these albums? So she's written a book on her journey. Um and it's being published by Howard Books, a Christian imprint of Simon Schuster that also publishes the Duck Dynasty books. Hmm. Same But I imprint. bet you they're not in the group of the national Howard is not a member of the NRB, but they are a member of the Evangelical Christian Publishers not Association. Not for long. No, no, no. <laughs> so this reporter talked to the president and CEO of the ECPA, and he says that, that no members have attempted to challenge Howard or Waterbrook Multnomah's membership. Uh, publishing books affirming same-sex relationship would not be grounds for removal, according to Kuiper, who's the president, because it would not violate the ECPA's statement of faith. See, this is, this is really interesting because what, what's being debated here is does affirming homosexuality or gay marriage, is that an essential or non-essential belief right. to be an right. evangelical? So the NRB is saying it's an essential. The ECPA right. is saying it's an un- non-essential. That'll be interesting to see how that plays out. And this, time. again, comes back to demographics, because when you look even at what younger evangelicals think about these issues, they are very different than our generation or those ahead of us. So young evangelicals in their 20s are overwhelmingly in favor of gay marriage and homosexual right. affirmation. All right. And the publishers are just following suit. That's the market they want to capture. Be Our fun polls to watch. are shifting. <laughs> Hang on to your fluber garbins, because everything is in flux. And I mean that in the electromagnetic sense of the word. Do you have any final comments? Not a one. Okay. Thank goodness it's the end. I don't know if I can make up a song about a gay whopper and not just go. It, it would terrible, not be good. Just I was try. Focus. <laughs> What's the worst that can happen? <laughs> We'd have to cut out the clothes. Hey, Christian publishers, is it a showstopper to write a book about a homosexual whopper? Do you get kicked out of the NRB? Is it good for you or is it good for me? At least can we agree that we can go go have lunch with a bunch of Christian pub- publishers? <laughs> And we can munch on Chick-fil-A sandwiches because they're Christian and watch out for those rainbow whoppers. That was that was just pitiful. <laughs> <laughs> was not it, you, your turn. You know, you, do you know I just want to say though, you know, yeah. I'm just not in the oh my gosh, Phil, you you know. Yeah, uh-huh. That's fine. Yeah, king of the world. See you next week. <laughs>